Hi everyone, my name is Moni. And I'm Naveen from Before You Play. And today we're going to be showing you how to play a game called Scram. Yes, this game is designed by Ted Elsbach and published by Bezier Games, who are helping sponsor this tutorial video. In this game, we are going camping. We are mm -hmm. going to be going camping with teammates, and we are trying to keep our campsite tidy because there are a few critters that are trying to ruin it for us. If you're familiar with a game called Silver, this game shares very similar mechanisms. But the difference is in this game, four or six players are going to be playing in teams of two versus two or three three versus three to cooperatively have the lowest score by the end of the game. Mm -hmm. Now this game also includes special rules for 1v2, but today we're going to be focusing on the team game. If you are interested in this game, there will be a link to the Bezier Games website, which is linked in the description down below. Lastly, if you like these kind of videos and you want to see more in the future, please consider subscribing. And with that, we are ready to begin. So if you please direct your attention to the center of the table, we're all set up here for a four player game of Scram. There Welcome to our campsites. Yes, two different campsites. We yes. have one team here and another team here. That's right. When you're setting up for the two versus two game like we have here, teammates should be sitting across from each other. But in the three versus three game, teammates should be sitting in every other seat. Mm -hmm. Now during setup, each player is dealt a hand of five cards and your hand is going to be laid out in front of you just like this with three cards facing down and two cards face up. Now it's important to note that players do not know the values of the cards that are face down. It's up to you as a player to try to figure out what your cards are over the course of the game. That's right, because the object of the game is for your team to have the lowest cumulative score by the end of the round. And so over the course of the game, players are going to be exchanging and discarding cards from their campsite in order to try to decrease their scores. Now the way that the game works is we are going to have one card face up in the discard pile to start the game. Mm -hmm. Then starting with the first player and continuing clockwise around the table, on your turn, you're either going to draw the top card from the deck or the top card from the face up discard pile. Mm -hmm. And what you do with the card depends on where you drew it from. So let's just start by drawing the top card from the deck. Now it's really important to note that when you draw a card from the draw deck, you look at the card privately. You do not reveal it to the rest of the table. And for demonstration purposes, let's just take a look at the anatomy of a card. Cards are going to be numbered from 1 to 13, mm -hmm. and each card shows a cute forest critter who is trying to destroy your campsite. Sure. In addition, cards numbered 5 through 13 also have an action that is listed at the bottom of the card. And so in this example, my number 6 will allow me to view two cards. Mm -hmm. Now when drawing a card from the draw deck, you have two options. You can either choose to exchange the card with cards from your campsite, which we'll talk about later, or you can choose to discard the card face up into the discard pile to take the action listed on the card. And so as an example, if it were my turn, I could discard this to view two cards. And I can use this power to view any two cards on the table. So since I don't know the values of three of my cards, I can use this action to secretly view one of them, or I could even use the action to view a card from an opponent or even my teammate. In addition, you can use this action to view the top card from the deck. And since this action allows you to view two cards, you can choose a combination of cards from around the table. Now, the important thing to note is once you've viewed a card, you must put it back face down so that nobody else can see it. And from that point on, you need to remember what you saw because you cannot look at the card again. Unless another action allows you to look at it. And so the actions on these cards are going to allow you to do a variety of things, including viewing cards, exchanging cards, flipping a card face up, or in the case of the number 13, placing this card mm -hmm. face up in front of any player, adding 13 points to their score, essentially. Now, it's important to note that the orientation of the cards must be maintained throughout the course of the game. Mm -hmm. So if a card is exchanged face up, it remains face up. And vice versa. The other thing to note is that you can only take the action on a card if you drew that card from the draw deck. Mm -hmm. You cannot take actions if they're from the discard pile, as you'll see later. Now, when drawing a card from the draw deck, instead of using the card's power, I can choose to exchange the card with a card from my campsite. Mm -hmm. So in this example, if I did not want to use the power on my card, I could choose to, say, exchange it with the eight, since I know that this is a six, or I could even exchange one of the face down cards that I don't know about yet. I'd be sort of taking a risk, a little gamble, but it might be worth it. So let's say I exchange it with this card. Mm -hmm. I would discard this card face up, and oh, there you go. There you go. <laughs> that was a good exchange. And then the card would go face down into my campsite since I drew the card face down. Mm -hmm. And now by doing this, Monique knows three of her cards versus exchanging the eight, and she would only know two of her cards. Exactly. And after making the exchange, that would end my turn and play proceeds clockwise to the next player. Now, when exchanging cards with your campsite, you can actually exchange multiple cards as long as they have the same value. So let's just fast forward a few turns until it gets to this player's turn. Mm -hmm. They're showing two sevens face up. 
And so let's just say on their turn, they decide to draw a card from the draw deck, looking at it privately, which happens to be a five, and they choose to exchange this card with cards from their campsite. Because these two cards are the same value, they can actually exchange the drawn card with both of them. And even though these two cards are face down, if the player knew that either one of these were also a seven, they could also discard that card. Mm -hmm. The discarded cards would go face up into the discard pile, mm -hmm. and the card they drew would go face down in its place. And it would stay face down because they drew it from the draw deck. And so by doing this, this team has lowered their score significantly, and this player is only down to four cards now. That's right, because only one card replaced two cards. Mm -hmm. Now, in exchanging cards, you can also discard cards that are in the campsites of your teammates, as long as they have a value that matches one of the ones in your campsite. So as an example, it is my turn again, and so I'm going to draw a card from the draw deck. It happens to be a four. So I'm going to use this to exchange cards from my campsite. Now, if you remember from earlier, this card is a six, and I also see another six in my teammate's campsite. So I can actually exchange this card with both of them. Now, again, before exchanging, you always have to push forward the cards that you intend on exchanging with, because there's a chance that you might be wrong about the face down cards, which mm -hmm. we'll talk about in a second. But you'll notice that my teammate also has an equal sign card in their campsite. There are a few of these cards in the deck, and they always match the value of the other cards that you choose. So in this case, it's going to be matching a six. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go ahead and push that one forward as well. Now that I've chosen all the cards I'm going to be exchanging with, I'm going to reveal my face down card to make sure that it's correct. And I was. There you go. Now, if any of the cards I pushed forward did not match, then I made a mistake mm -hmm. and the cards would have to return to their corresponding campsites. I would also have to keep the card that I drew from the draw deck, increasing the number of cards in my campsite. Now, you might face extra penalties depending on how wrong you were. If the chosen cards had at least three unique values, then the active player must draw one extra card from the draw deck and place it face down on either end of their campsite without looking at it. If four of the cards are unique, you must draw two extra cards. And if five or more cards are unique values, you draw a total of three extra cards, adding them to your campsite. Not good. And this is always in addition to the original card you drew. And any cards revealed during this process stay face up in your campsites. But going back to our example, we did not make a mistake, <laughs> which means this exchange was a success and we get to discard all three cards into the discard pile. Now, whenever you're, you discard cards that contain an equal sign, the equal sign must go to the bottom of the stack mm -hmm. when placing the cards into the discard pile. And now the card that I drew from the draw deck will now go face down into my campsite. And my teammate is happy because they only have three cards in their campsite, pushing all their cards together uh, to form their campsite again. Mm -hmm. Now, it's important to note, if you ever draw a card from the draw deck and you don't want to use its action or exchange with one of your cards, you can discard it. Now, on your turn, instead of drawing a card from the draw deck, you can choose to draw the top card from the discard pile. However, any cards drawn this way can only be used to exchange cards from your campsite. Mm -hmm. You cannot use it for the card's action. So now it's this player's turn, mm -hmm. and they see that their teammate is showing a six in their campsite. So on their turn, they may want to draw the top card from the discard pile and choose to either replace their face up 10 or maybe replace one of their face down cards with the six. Since a 10 is a pretty high value, let's just replace it with the six. Mm -hmm. Doing so makes it so that on this player's turn, they can choose to exchange a card with both of the sixes in these two campsites. So as you can see, since this is a co-op game technically, you're gonna wanna work together with your teammate to try to form those combos amongst your campsites. Now, seeing as this is a co-op game, there are a couple of communication rules to be aware of. Yes, you can always openly discuss strategy with your teammates, and you can also identify which cards you've already seen, but you can never discuss the values of any face-down cards, including any that you think your teammates have already seen. Right, you're also not allowed to hint at which cards to take certain actions on. And I just want to note that when drawing a card from the discard pile, you can also choose to exchange multiple cards similar to when drawing from the draw deck, as long as they have all the same value. Mm -hmm. Play continues like this clockwise with players trying to lower their score by drawing cards, replacing and exchanging ones and working with their teammates to try to get the lowest score. Now, there are two ways in which the round can end. The first way is if ever the draw deck is empty at the start of a camper's turn, the round ends immediately. At that point, all players reveal their cards and each team adds up the values of all the cards in their campsites. The team with the lower score technically wins the round, but really you're gonna write both scores down and at the end of a set number of rounds, whoever has the cumulative lowest score is gonna be the winner. 
The other way around can end is by a player declaring scram. If during the game a player feels confident that their team has a lower score than their opponent's team, instead of taking their turn, they can call scram. Each other player would be able to take one more turn each before final scoring. This gives each other player one more chance to either lower their score or affect the other team negatively. Now it's important to note, you can only declare scram if it's the start of your turn and you have two or fewer cards in your campsite. Then all players go into end of round scoring, revealing the cards in their campsite and scoring them as normal. So if the campsites look like this, this team score would be a total of nine because this player has three and this player has six. Mm -hmm. And this team has an equal sign in one of their campsites, which takes the value of the lowest numbered card in that player's campsite, which would be a one. Mm -hmm. And so this team has a total score of six, which is a good thing because if the team who declared Scram has the lower score or is tied for the lower score, then their score is actually zero. But if their score is higher, then they add 10 to the sum of their values, which means they would have a 16 instead of a 6. Fortunately, their 6 is lower than the opposite team's 9, which means their score is 0. Mm -hmm. At this point, you should record each team's score on a piece of paper, or you can download the free Scram app that'll keep track of the score. You then take all the cards, reshuffle them, and deal out five cards to each player, two going face up, three going face down, and the start player is the player on the winning team who had the lowest total score in the previous round. Now in a four camper game, you play a total of four rounds, and in a six camper game, you play a total of three rounds. And at the end of the final round, whichever team has the lowest cumulative score is the winner. And in the case of a tie, the team who won the final round is the winner. And there you have it. That is essentially how to play Scram. Now, like we were mentioning earlier, there are special rules for a one versus two player game that can be found in the rule book. But for now, thank you all so much for watching our video. We really hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions about anything that you saw here today, please feel free to leave us a comment down below and we'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. Now, there's a link to Bezier Games website, which you can check out more information on Scram. We hope the video was helpful. If you'd like to see more like this in the future, please consider subscribing. Thank you. Bye. Bye.